the CCDB director, I, I, I think he exemplifies, he was always steady. Mm -hmm. He was, I he had his values you. and uh, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I appreciated him. I respected I'll him, you know, uh, so that I very just much. Can be. This is another episode of a special series called Enough for All of the podcast Walk, Talk, Listen. This series sheds light on 75 years of an NGO called CWS. My name is Mili Bloom and I welcome you to another episode of Walk, Talk, Listen. Uh, good day, everybody. This is another episode of the podcast about Church World Servers, and I'm so delighted with today's guest. And uh, like always, I ask uh, Lonnie to introduce himself. Lonnie, can, please go ahead. Yes, Maurice. Well, I'm very happy to be here. I'm Robert Turnipsey, but I'm usually known as Lonnie. And I'm retired, and I live in a Mennonite retirement community in Lansdale, Pennsylvania. I'm 94 years old, and I worked for Church World Service from 1981 through 1996, first as the director of the Southern Asia Office of CWS, and then as the executive director or CEO from 1993 to 1996. Wow, and it's amazing. And and for, you know, the the listeners, I I um, my time that I met Lonnie for the first time, and also that uh, I uh, heard for the first time about Church World Service, was when I uh, worked for Christian Commission for Development in Bangladesh, where you Lonnie always were the representative uh, of Church World Service, and you came to the round tables um, right. of, of uh, CCDB. I remember um, well. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is so good to see you uh, again. It's, it's, it's so great. Um, Lonnie, can, can you um, tell maybe to me and, and, and the audience, you know, the first time that uh, you heard about Church World Service? Sure. Well, CWS was born the year that I entered college in 1946. Wow. My first encounter with CWS was 11 years later in Hong Kong. Hmm. Uh, beginning, of course, in 1949, the communists took over in China. More than 2 million people fled to Hong Kong as refugees. Hmm. And CWS established an office in Hong Kong and appointed expatriate staff to meet the needs of these refugees. You know, resettlement, Housing, we built, they built cottage villages, uh, food, living assistance, jobs, but all the things that refugees need. And Churchill Service also established a local committee to provide guidance and oversight. And of course, after several years, then CWS joined a Lutheran and the World Council of Churches program to form Hong Kong Christian Service, which became an independent, locally supported service and development agency. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that program is still in existence today. It's, okay. uh, very, uh, uh, it's a very important program in Hong Kong. So that was my first uh, uh, experience with Church World Service. One of my colleagues was on the board of directors of which it is had established as a local committee. And I was working in other kinds of refugee programs. So uh, I had con fairly regular contact with uh, CWS. And mm -hmm. interestingly enough, one of the directors during my time was an American Baptist named Pearly Gates. 
<laughs> so when did you decide to apply for churchful service or how did that go, uh, Lonnie? So how, when did you really start working? I started working service? in 1981. Uh, we we okay, came back later. from yeah. Hong Kong uh, in uh, 1973. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I worked in the ecumenical office of the uh, uh, Board of Global Ministries of the United Methodist Church. And uh, mm -hmm. so, and I was responsible for, uh, I was in the ecumenical and interreligious concerns division, and I was doing a lot of interreligious work. But when the Southern Asia office became uh, vacant, I applied mm -hmm. and was invited to come in. I had not worked in Asia, I mean, in Southern Asia, because mm -hmm. we had been in Hong mm -hmm. Kong, but I had traveled a good bit in South and Southeast Asia. You know, if, if you were asked, uh, what do you like about the work of churchful service? How would how would you describe well, it? Obviously, faith based and the quality of the staff, mm -hmm. many things. But mm -hmm. I would list, I think, four things rather specific. First, I okay. think churchful service deals with some of the most critical problems in our world community today. I mean, refugees the number of refugees, you mm -hmm. probably have a, a ballpark figure. I heard the other day it was about 80 million throughout the world. That was That is one critical problem. Second is just the issue of dire poverty, whether the result of disasters or the colonial past or wars or what corruption, mismanagement, poverty. Uh, is, is it seems to me, you know, uh, one of the most critical issues that we face today as a human community, and uh, the number of people suffering. I find it stunning that people are starving in Yemen today, and that we have not figured out a way that everyone in our world can uh, have adequate and healthy food. Now, so though, and the third problem, of course, is helping people rebuild after natural disasters and helping them get back on their feet. And I note that church world mm. service it provides such assistance here in the United States. Though that's what I like about CWS, <laughs> it works with local partners, mm -hmm. both in the US and in other parts of the world. As I understand its history and, and some of what I've observed, when CWS first started, it established its own offices in many parts of the world, often led by expatriate staff from the US. But as the other nations, underdeveloped nations begin to be, develop, become independent mm. and train their leadership uh, and uh, people had developed skills and the mm -hmm. ability to lead, then CWS helped form and develop local service and development agencies in many countries. And these, of course, were staffed by local people. Mm -hmm. And often they might have a few expatriates, but rather than being the leaders, they were now staffed. Uh, working under indigenous people. Mm -hmm. I think I'm correct mm -hmm. that a number of CWS offices, uh, original offices directly from CWS were transferred to local groups and organized. And that's certainly true of CCDB mm -hmm. in Bangladesh. Correct, correct. So uh, to me, working with the local agencies helps ensure that the services being provided are a response to local needs, customs, and perspectives. It advocates for justice, mm -hmm. for dealing with root causes. And uh, as it, I mean, I've been, was a part uh, in the early days of the debate about mm -hmm. 
service? Is that just Band-Aid mm -hmm. and ignoring uh, root causes? Or uh, when we get into the dealing with root causes, that's mm -hmm. often controversial. Mm -hmm. But CWS decided to take it on uh, in many uh, instances. And um, it, it seems to me that the <clears throat> If you're going to deal with refugees, poverty, and disasters, you got to deal with justice issues mm. and deal with social change. And uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm uh, I appreciate the fact that advocacy for social change has become a key component of its ministry. Mm. And I notice on the, your website, one of the clear examples is climate change. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, CWS says, we call for policies that invest in clean, renewable, and sustainable energy. And mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we only have to look in our own community and our own nation to see the furor that often develops when you mm -hmm. stand for that. I felt that CWS mm -hmm. had a strong local base in the US. Mm -hmm. I was not aware of some of the changes in the co community uh, work and the crop mm -hmm. walks as you described, but it seems to me through the crop walk and local community mm -hmm. supporters and organizations and programs and sharing resources uh, from the crop walks with local communities, mm -hmm then it seems to me that CWS can claim to have a root in local communities across the country. Absolutely. And so I think it's important that it works not only in other countries, mm -hmm. but also here in the US. And so important to me is the global education that it provides through these walks mm -hmm. and in the local communities on the issues of refugees, poverty, and disaster relief and social mm -hmm. justice. Thank, thank you for lifting it up. And I, I definitely, I, I um, although as as a, as the interviewer, I try to stay neutral here. And but I, I agree with you. You know, uh, uh, Church World Service is definitely a grassroots organization and has strong connections uh, with the different local communities in the U.S. Uh, as well. Um, you know, one is indeed through the crop hunger walks. Two is you know through our members, of course, and 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 uh, a second, and then third is uh, you know through our refugee resettlement work. Uh, yes. You know, we re rely on communities and churches uh, right. as well. So, so uh, absolutely, you're, you're so right. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that, uh, Lonnie. Now, what I wanted to ask you, you know, um, if you look back at the those number of years that you were in charge of of a church world service, um, yeah, if I if I ask you to mention one or you know maximum three things that you were proud uh, on for you know having pushed or that were that uh, that happened uh, during your tenure. Uh, what would be that one thing be, or or maximum three things? Um, what would you mention, Lonnie? Well, if I um, if I might go back to the time that I was in the Southern Asia office yes. first, yeah, yeah. With, with with that, of course, yeah, and um, the um, I I really. Uh, enjoyed working with CCDB, mm -hmm. the Christian Commission for Development in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And I felt that uh, the, the staff leadership, I was impressed by their programs and this, their approach in organizing local groups of particularly women at that point and uh, uh, training them and 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 often establishing a goat project 
I really liked the goat project <laughs> of where they would you would give a goat to a family and uh, they would care for it and then they would when the goat had a a, a lamb they they would give that back to CWS you would give it to another person in the community and gradually you could build up these people who uh, you know, they were becoming local entrepreneurs and uh, supporting and having things to support themselves. So the, uh, to me, the support for CCDB was, uh, was one thing that I really appreciated about our work. And another one also related to uh, CCDB, I don't, you probably remember them, the typhoon shelters. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. every year Bangladesh experiences typhoons in the Bay of Bengal, and they, they did this year. And they sweep up the bay, hitting Cox's Bazaar and Chittagong, wiping mm -hmm. out many homes and villages. And um, I don't know who came up with the idea, but someone came up with the idea of building typhoon shelters. And I remember visiting the shelters, two story uh, up on legs and the buildings up above. And, uh, but they weren't in the budget originally. So CWS with others raised money and they built the shelters strong enough to withstand these storms and protect a large number of people. Local initiative, cooperation of agencies, flexibility, accomplishment. I, I, I thought that was, I, I appreciated that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. a, a third one was the was in Vietnam. And this was, we, mm -hmm. we had our own representative there and um, mm -hmm. uh, Skip Dangers. And um, this was medical kids. Skip learned that young men and women were completing medical school and given assignments, but had no equipment, no medical bags, nothing to take with them, but then they were being assigned to rural areas and rural clinic. Mm -hmm. So CWS purchased medical kits and gave them to, I don't know how many, uh, I don't remember how many uh, peop people, young people who were going into the villages down in the Mekong Delta uh, to, to treat people and to carry on clinics. And uh, so this was a big boost to improving health of local people who lived in those areas. And again, it was a, a response to a local need by the people and innovation. And just incidentally, you know, uh, I, I really, I thought I did not have a share in creating it, but I did have a share in furthering them. I, I thought pretty positively of the round tables of the World Council. Mm -hmm. We often had a lot of differences of opinion and often had struggles, but I thought the concept and uh, of working together to meet the needs of an agency and not overlapping and not competing with each other. Uh, I think we did some good things together. Mm -hmm. So yeah. those, those were some of the things. And, and I, I, I gave a lot of time and energy uh, to, to supporting the round table mm. with, yeah. with our work. And, and not, Lonnie, uh, if you can give me two minutes quickly to explain to the listeners uh, who don't know what the round tables uh, meetings were yeah. but uh, they were um, in, in many of the countries where the different uh, faith-based organizations were working together the local organization and in the case of, of Bangladesh it was the Christian Commission for Development in Bangladesh CCDB uh, they would call a roundtable meeting and then you had not only Church World Service from the US, but also ICCO from the Netherlands, uh, Kerkin Aksi from the Netherlands, uh, you know, Christian Aid, etc. Uh, Bread for the World from Germany. Uh, the different organizations would come together 
And then uh, the local organization, in the example of, of Bangladesh, uh, CCDB would present its plans um, and said, you know, this is the budget that we would need. And then, uh, the, you know, there would be a discussion who would be willing and able to support a certain initiative. So, and that the advantage of that was to, you know, further strengthen the plans and, and see if there was also expertise around the table that could uh, be useful for the for the different plans, but also to um, to make the the best out of the buck, right? In terms of you know not to have an overlap of uh, um, two organizations supporting uh, similar projects, but to really collaborate and work together. So I I, I think uh, uh, in 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 Bangladesh, what I uh, experienced, it really worked. I don't know if it worked in every country where where the roundtables were, right. but I, I I really think the concept was a was a great concept. Yeah. yeah. During my three years, I guess one thing was that we, we held together <laughs> <laughs> and we worked out some of the issues between the council and, and, and church world service. Mm -hmm. And uh, we developed the community effort. Uh, we spent a, a good bit of time with the, the, that, but also, during that time, there were a lot of the, the denominations were beginning to develop their own service mm -hmm. agencies mm -hmm. and spend more of their resources. Uh, I remember that, you know, at, at one stage in the, maybe just before I became director, the, uh, <clears throat> we would have a major natural, uh, natural disaster somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so there would be a, an article in the New York Times and many papers. And if you want to help with that, give to the Red Cross, to Catholic Relief Services, to Church World Service, and maybe one or two others. But there were not many at that time. But before long, mm -hmm. many of the denominations thought, well, you know, shouldn't we be a part of that list? Mm. And uh, I remember, you know, one of the churches which moved first, mm. and, and that was when the, some of the denominations, uh, in, including my own, the United Methodists, began to develop more of their own programs. And uh, some of them would be, whenever there was a disaster, would also be, given publicity about it. So uh, that was an issue that we were dealing with, you know, when, when I was uh, uh, it, within uh, CWS at that moment. And the whole issue of uh, fundraising was mm -hmm. a, a major issue. Yeah. And those were definitely not not uh, easy uh, topic and conversations um, that you had to um, to have. Um, Lonnie, I would like to to uh, jump to another area if you don't mind. Not at all. You know uh, when when CWS uh, celebrated its fifty years anniversary, um, it produced a, a book was produced. Um, with the title um, 50 Years of Help and Hope. Right. And um, I would like to, to ask you, you know, if, if, uh, if Church for Service would produce another book um, about 75 years, um, what are some of the keywords that you would use for the title of, of such a book? And, think, yeah, and such a use... book will not be produced because we are making a podcast <laughs> right. now. <laughs> but you I know, think I would use three three words. Okay, compassion, mm. justice, equality. Mm. I think that well, well, I think in recent years 
compassion has uh, it's become an issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, many, I think most local people in, the, in our communities feel compassion for people in need. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me the, the way, the kind of tensions that we're living with now, uh, particularly in the political arenas, um, we need to rediscover uh, what it means to be compassionate. And yet, and, and but at the same time to work for justice because it's it's very clear that I think the COVID has made very clear the inequities that exist in our society and where we need to work for greater uh, uh, compassion, greater uh, enabling of people, empowering of people, for greater justice for people and, and, and the equality. So somehow I think I would use those three words. I don't know how I yeah. put it together, but no, 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 no. It, it's, I don't it's, have it's, a ready-made title. <laughs> And no, this is this is insightful. So because I I have to think about the title for this podcast series as well. So uh, th thank you for 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 sharing that. Um, you know I I like music myself, so I always have a question about music as well. Um, mm. If I if I ask you to come up with a song or a piece of music that represents CWS from your point of view, you know what would that song be or what would that piece of music be? You know, I thought about that. One of the problems is I'm not as up to date on contemporary music <laughs> <laughs> and and artists. I, I don't know, you know, as many as as many young, as young people do today. So, I think the best I could come up with was Tijuana Brass. And the Tijuana Brass Band, I don't have a particular song, but mm -hmm. one of theirs. But I remember when we were in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I had an appendectomy. So uh, on one Sunday, uh, on Easter Sunday, uh, I went to the Episcopal Church instead of to my local church because I... I uh, didn't know as many people there, and I felt I, I would uh, it wouldn't be maybe as tiresome. Well, when the service was over, we came out to the blaring of this Tijuana brass, the whole message of resurrection and new life and uh, empowering uh, people. That really, uh, you can see that memory of that music that day is still with me. As I say, I don't remember what, which song of Tijuana Brass they played, but that the brass, the, the rhythm it carries, uh, anyway, it would be something along that line. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, uh, Lonnie, I, I, um, this, is, this is an observation of, of myself and, and um, I, I do this to, to uh, provoke a you know, conversation as well. Um, you know, in, when, when Church World Service was established in 1946, it started as a US Christian organization. Right. Um, you know, um, that tried that said, you know, because together we can do more than a part and it tried to work ecumenically and it still uh, does. Um, but if I look at the organization and how I uh, perceive it now, I think it has evolved into a more global organization that is more interfaith. If you hear me say that, you know, or, or, or describe that observation, um, what are your thoughts about that? Um, you know, uh, do you say, yeah, Maurice, I, I understand, I agree, or say, no, Maurice, I think you're off here. 
because of this and this. So, so uh, yeah. what is your reaction? <clears throat> um, well, uh, as, as I, I was thinking about this, and it, it dep I guess it depends on how you define interfaith and uh, uh, other faiths. Um, if you take out, just to begin with money, mm -hmm. if you take out the government support for CWS, that's, uh, as I look at it, it's about 60%, I think, the refugee program. program. And uh, now you've indicated that the, the crop walk may be less Christian oriented as, as I thought. I, I, would, I was maybe, I have been assuming that, that um, I, I mean, for example, in our local community, the churches organized the crop walk and they the work it together. So, yeah. uh, which is still the case in most most uh, places. But I, what I try to mention to you is that, but I, I think it's open to other faiths as well, and that's yeah. maybe oh, a little that's bit true. different than open. how it started. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. But in any case, uh, I, I have, um, uh, I guess, I have supported the understanding. A Christian at base, but global and interfaith in in outreach. Mm. And uh, I'm not sure uh, how how we best. I mean, to 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 say that it's to global and interfaith would mean its basic policies, its people who have the power would come from a whole variety of different uh, areas. And uh, so uh, I guess my, my point of view has been to, uh, to, to strengthen the, to, to strengthen this, that there was strength in the churches doing uh, at, together at the bottom, but mm -hmm. the outreach is open both to include in terms of staff and mm -hmm. also participation on the board. And, uh, but it's, I think this is an interesting question to study. It's interesting that mm -hmm. the college I graduated from, Davidson College, a Presbyterian school, mm -hmm. They've been struggling with this very question, particularly yeah. about having people of other faiths on the board. How do you keep your core values mm -hmm. uh, that, that out of which the openness, you know, develops and emerges? I don't know whether that's helpful, uh, you know, in terms of. Uh, um, I, I would say certainly that CWS is a global organization mm -hmm. and is, can, can be described as interfaith with uh, mm -hmm. having staff and, and I, I don't know, I, I assume that some of the people, I, I looked up the people in the board of directors, but I, some of them, it didn't identify any sort of faith relation. So uh, I'm not sure what percentage of the board would be Christian, if, if or even if there is a percentage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, 51% um, of the board members need to be you know, in good standing yeah. with yeah. our members. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, but you don't need to be from a particular uh, a faith. You, de you do need to be be able to um how do you say exemplify you know the, what, what the organization stands for so you right. need to be fine with the values right and they they are based on uh very similar to when church world Surf started so so yeah. um um so that's very no i i think that's 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 insightful what you were saying um i i i, I think it's uh 
you know, I, that's why I'm I'm describing it also as a, as evolving. I, I see change uh, happening. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think you need to, as an organization, you need to be aware of it. Um, and maybe the question is, if the denominational offices don't want to, you know, be the main core of support, mm. then how do you nurture your core value yeah. mm -hmm. uh, at, at the same time that you reach out and and relate, you know, uh, and cooperate with, work with, involve people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of other faiths? Um, so, yeah. Um, Absolutely. I, yeah. I, I was trying to figure with from the money. Mm -hmm. If you take out the government money, uh, would not a good percentage of the refugee money, resettlement money, maybe the um, development and disaster, would not a fair amount of that come from churches? And mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I don't yes. know the answer to that. Yeah. Yes. No. It, it it does. But then you also have, of course, uh, the online giving and the crop hunger walks, and they so are that, from the, the online giving, which oh, is increasing, that, and then the crop hunger walks is is uh, you know, becoming more a mix of the okay, different yeah, people, right. right? So that right. is that's that is changing. Although the majority is definitely still, uh, uh, you know faith-based and church church related right, uh, absolutely right. absolutely um but that could change i, I mean you're to restrictive I, I don't want to be restrictive no. i'm looking at what yeah. is the way you maintain your core value your faith-based understood value. yeah yeah i understood that Um, Lonnie, if I if I uh, ask you to uh, come up with the name of a colleague, an ex-colleague of Church World Service, or a partner of Church World Service, or a supporter of su uh, Church World Service, who best embodies, according to you, what uh, CWS is about, who will you name and why? Uh, hmm. I think, you know, and and right now, you you you've got to help me because I, mm -hmm. his name has gone out of my head. The CCDB director. Oh, Shushanta, Shushanto Adikari. Yeah, he passed away. Uh, you know, a number of years. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And in in many ways, I I, I think he exemplifies. He was always steady mm -hmm. he was he had his values and uh, I, I don't know I, I, I appreciated him I respected him you know uh, very much and um, he was he was pretty uh, incredible I mean he's one I consider him as one of my mentors and I, I think also our new CEO Rick Santos uh, does this, you know, he has the same view uh, with this because he, Rick Santos, also worked for, for CCDB. I think what Susanta did, from my perspective, uh, Loni, is, you know, it, if you look at, at uh, the percentage of Christians within Bangladesh, it was is very uh, small. Right. Uh, and then he was running a very important NGO with a multi faith staff. Right. So, um, you know, his second in command was a uh, was a Muslim. Right. Um, from Janali and yeah. um, you know it was, it was not easy and and so um, yeah it pretty amazing in terms of you know participatory management <laughs> um, we're talking about the you know the, the late 80s uh, 90s That's right. um, and um, uh, women's empowerment which you know was incredible in, in that's uh, right when that's all started and um well we know that bangladesh did very well i mean that's why they they were able to to make up for the you know they were far behind initially from pakistan and, and india but they've caught up on so many indicators right. that yeah. all has to do with uh 
you know, creation of of uh, platforms and, and abilities for women to uh, to express themselves and to uh, be empowered. Yeah. And he was definitely one of those male leaders that yeah. uh, well, that exemplified it within his organization. So so um, yeah, pretty incredible. Right. I don't know whether you were going to ask the question about about looking to the future. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. The wish, the wish for for uh, CWS. I'd like to say a little bit about yeah. that. I think I'd be interested in your response. I hope church world service can hold together contextuality mm -hmm. with technical expertise. Uh, especially during the early years of my work with CWS, most of the area offices gave strong support for a contextual response in the different areas. So what that meant was that CWS might do something, be doing something different in Vietnam from what it was doing in India mm -hmm. or different in uh, Sri Lanka than what it was doing, you know, in Africa, because it was responding to the, it developed relationships with the leadership of local people and mm -hmm. communities. They were developing programs in line with what people there wanted and, uh, uh, and then carried it out. But in the 90s, while I was still in CWS, in the service and development community, the emphasis seemed to be shifting to providing mm -hmm. technical expertise. Mm. And part of it, I know, had to do with donors and their, their, the way they were thinking about doing poverty development. But um, so, some, would, some agencies then would focus on water and do it in every country they were working in or food or education or, you know, what else. And uh, we in the area offices at CWS at that time uh, felt that each local situation was different. And we really, uh, we had helped develop these local service areas with expertise and they in turn were working with villages. So, um, uh, I, I'm, I guess, very much a contextualist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes the need was for technical expertise, no mm -hmm. question about that. And so we had to bring, find a, a way to supply the technical uh, expertise. And I know it used to be kind of frustrating because the, because the CFER staff would say, well, what is, what is CWS's niche? What do, what do we really do? You know, what is our techno, the three or four areas on which we focus? And it would be frustrating because our representative from Vietnam would say this and somebody would say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, so I guess that's one thing that, um, you know, that I, uh, I really, uh, that, that my, my concern is, uh, and then as I read through the uh, the um, website, it seems to me that there is a bit of both. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so, so uh, you know, you wish that we will continue to keep that as as one of our strengths uh, for the future as yeah, well. That's right. right. Yeah. Great. And, and I, I really appreciate what you just said and, and because it's still very often the discussion that's going on. I, I'm now you know, close uh, working with our, you called it CIFR, but we call it Funds Development and Marketing what, uh, what uh, Funds Development and Marketing or, okay, uh, Department right, at the right. moment. But, okay. but yeah. you know, it's the same bunch of people. And it's very, it, I, I will, I will um, 
share this particular audio, what you just said. I said, you know, this is just mentioned by Lonnie, who worked with us many, many years ago. And this <laughs> this topic is still very uh, relevant. <laughs> so thanks, thanks, thanks for that. Um, no, I, what I wanted to ask you is if you can share an anecdote or an experience with which best describes your time with CWS or a memory that you have when you think back about CWS, you always or often think about this particular experience. And um, yeah, it's telling about your time with CWS. Well, I think, I, I think, um, I, I think the experience mm -hmm. of sitting down with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember once uh, in Vietnam, and uh, our Skip Dangus was our representative. I don't. Do you know Skip? I know Skip very well. Yes. And, yeah. yeah. Well, he was our representative. He's retired now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, well, uh, he and I, you know, um, we went to, to Laos. And actually, mm -hmm. this was um, after I had retired. I, I wrote a book for the United Methodist Women, a study book on Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. And um, so he and I went uh, uh, we were in, in um, Laos and we sat down with a group in a village where um, the um, uh, where CWS had been working and giving support to schools and school children, mm -hmm. training to teachers and things like that and they have a, a string ceremony that they, they, you know, you people sing and they dance and they, um, uh, it's sort of a celebration of our working together. Well, they put a whole series of strings around my wrist up for about two or three inches mm -hmm. on each run. And yeah. it's good wishes. And, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, and you, you're supposed to uh, wear it like for a period of time and not take them off. <laughs> but we, then there were other experiences. We, you know, we, I remember in Vietnam sitting down with three elders in a village and trying to talk mm -hmm. about what their problems were, and um, and they they wanted to get me drunk. <laughs> <laughs> they were drinking and uh, Skip could handle it. And I, I, I'm, I'm a teetotaler, no. but I would yeah. usually take a little bit. But we had really a very interesting, you know, conversation and they yeah. kept yeah. pushing me to do this. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so I, I think those uh, uh, experiences of sitting down with villagers and listening mm -hmm. to um, uh, wh what they were struggling with and you know what mm -hmm. they were doing. Um, and, and I would add to that, I developed some real friendships with people mm -hmm. from ECOV, for example, and Christian mm -hmm. Aid with the other uh, agencies. We really used From, to, and yeah. I don't know whether you remember Kyung Su Park or not. Yes, yes. Well, absolutely. Kyung Su is, he used to give me a hard time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Partly because <clears throat> one, one of the illustrations of working together was that church world service in Cambodia and Vietnam was restricted on what it could do. We had to get a license mm -hmm. for everything we did. And one of the needs mm -hmm. and basic needs we wanted to meet was for some yeah. earth moving equipment to build some dams and things like that. And uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, but we they wouldn't give us a license for it. Mm -hmm. So we worked with the World Council and the German churches through the World Council gave 
a, a big uh, set of equipment, earth movers mm -hmm. and uh, tractors and, you know, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And Paul McCleary at the time, he went to Cuba and brought technicians from Cuba to Cambodia to be, work, be CWS staff and mm -hmm. run, one of them uh, worked on uh, um, the earth moving and another worked with agriculture. And the friendships that because of the round tables, mm -hmm. we, we, we developed a friendship. And that's not to say there weren't tensions and we often disagreed with each other, but then we'd go out and have a drink together. And mm -hmm. so that those relationships, I would say were, um, I think they helped the work mm -hmm. because we did have relationships. We could settle things and uh, mm -hmm. even working through, I'm sure you've experienced in your talking of development and money and mm -hmm. what it's going for. There are a lot of tensions. So yeah. I, I would say that was, you know, one of the most rewarding areas mm -hmm. for me. What I pick up from from you is is you know really the human connections are are uh, what CWS is all about, and I often say that you know if if uh, if we are able to connect people, then we are making a huge step because that's so important. Because if you understand, if you make a connection, then you have you probably are able to show a different perspective. And if you understand uh, different perspectives. Uh, you might disagree at times, or you might totally uh, still uh, disagree, but at least you understand. And if, you, right. if, there, is an, if there is an understanding, uh, you know, there might be a start of a dialogue. And if there is a dialogue, you know, you might work towards, you know, peace and, 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 and uh, you know, trying to improve situations uh, for the better. So I, I really uh, appreciate what you lifted up. Um, for, for the listeners, you know, you mentioned Kyushu uh, Park, and so he was the, the, the director of the World Council of Ch uh, Churches based in uh, Geneva, responsible right. for the Asia desk. Um, and um, no, I know him also because he definitely, um, you know, helped me to get my first uh, job with uh -huh. the Christian Commission for Development uh -huh. in Bangladesh. So, so uh, yeah. yeah, small, small world. Yeah, um, but uh, no, and he's he definitely was a good friend. Was always, but also critical. And uh, so I, I remember that I he was a good friend. I should be clear on that. No, no, for me, for me too. But I, I, I remember I met him one in the elevator in uh, at four seventy five, and I was already a couple of years with Church World Service. And he said to me, Maurice, your Church World Service is not, you know. It's not doing its work. Uh, what? It's not doing its, its work properly, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, because we, you know, we, we went through a time where we had to prioritize our, our work because we couldn't work in all the countries. So, um, and as a result, our work in Korea, you know, between North and South, especially, yes. uh, was not as prominent, you know, as before. So, yeah. and that was very close to his heart, of course. So, so well, uh, yeah. And yeah. And you know, during my time, one of the issues when I was in the Southern Asia office was in India, the food for work programs. Mm -hmm. And CASA, we received food from the US government, yeah, as yeah. you know, and yeah. distributed it to villagers. Often, mm -hmm. I, I remember one village, they were building houses for people mm -hmm. and they paid in food. They gave them food for the villagers' work. Mm -hmm. But the European agencies were very critical of that, and yeah, they yeah. felt that. Uh, and and gra gradually, we changed the the the, the, the practice, mm -hmm. and uh, moving, I guess, at one point to selling the food and mm -hmm. making money available, to then you know not being a part of that. But but that was a good illustration of where we had some sharp differences. Mm -hmm. uh, and and yet we learn to uh, live together and to work together.
Now, the, the 75th anniversary of Church World Service is also being used to look at itself, you know, and, and part of looking at itself is also what is called, uh, you know, the brand of Church World Service yeah. and, um, and its supporters. And um, similarly to, the, to our member churches, we see, you know, still, still the average uh, age of our supporter is around 69 years old. So we know that we need to ensure that we attract a younger generation. Ultimately, if if we uh, w- you know want to be sustainable and and uh, you know to continue to work for another seventy five years. Right. Um, now, one of the things that we have found out is you know this younger generation is is uh, is a different uh, generation. Uh, it's not necessarily going to church. It might still be religious. It might still be spiritual. Um, but for this younger generation, the the word church is often problematic. And that means that, you know, they would not go to church world service, although they might like us after they know us more about what we do. But the name is often a hindrance. So one of the discussions that's going on to, to see if we should consider changing the name Church World Service into something that uh, would be easier with the younger generation. So, yeah, I, I would just like to hear your, your uh, reaction to, to this. And again, I'm oversimplifying the whole aspect of brand, of bringing it down to only, you know, a word. But it is one of the issues yeah. that we are looking at. So uh-huh. so I don't want to create panic, but you know, I it, it's the most concrete one where where you know where you have discussions about the future and the brand and how should we position ourselves yeah. uh, for this younger generation. So what 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 uh, what do you yeah what are your thoughts? Yeah you know it it, it really is interesting that some of the other evangelical agencies mm-hmm. like World Relief Mm-hmm. compassion international i mean they don't have the, even the word christian or or um church you know in it mm-hmm. and um that that's really a kind of a tough one mm-hmm. because yeah that's really <laughs> oh. and i can tell you it's it's a, di- a very difficult discussion within it, it is yeah, absolutely because, also within the staff and partners yeah, and, yeah. I mean, I guess I would li- I would hate to see CWS become um, like an independent agency, self-funded, hmm. you know, uh, uh, cut off from the roots that it that mm-hmm. it has. On the other hand, I guess I w- I certainly would not be. I could see why uh, a, a different name without church. I don't know whether just using CWS, but um, I can appreciate that you have a real task on, on your hands trying to reach young people. Although mm-hmm. young families in, in our community, when we have a crop walk, there are a lot of young people. Mm-hmm. And a, a lot of young families. So I don't know whether you know you can build from there, but uh, um, there have been so many agencies, service agencies that have developed in in the last um, thirty years, maybe mm-hmm. 20, 20 to thirty years. I'd hate I'd hate to see CWS just become another one of you know the independent agencies mm-hmm. but but because you have a, a wonderful history but how to how to bring that history together i'm not sure mm-hmm. so to add to what i said um uh, you know what what is definitely clear is that you know uh, church world service or whatever uh, if there if there would be a, a name change and that's uh, we are still far from, away from that but if um, it it's clear that it needs to maintain a faith-based organization and needs to um, stay true to 
to its values. Yeah. Um, and and but you know, but as as you know, you know, having worked in that's how I compare it. You know, if you work in different countries, uh, you try to search for the terminology that works yeah. well, right? And I mean, that's you right. mentioned the context. So, if the context requires that you approach something in, you know, a little bit differently to make it work. I think we are the type of organization that has always done that. So, so that's that's Maurice speaking. Um, but I, I, yeah. I do totally understand, um, and I'm aware of, of the complexity of it, and 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 also the hurt, uh, because you know the name Church World Service has brought us so much good as well. So, um, no, th th thanks for weighing weighing in on on that. If, if you look back at, at Church World Service in the time that you worked there, um, you know, what, what, uh, what do you think about the role of, of uh, CWS in fighting injustice and especially racial injustice within the US and outside of the US? Yeah, um, well, you know, one thing is interesting and in that, um, after at the time of the Vietnam War, um, CWS chose to go to North Vietnam and to carry on a program of of relief to to North Vietnam, and there was some criticism of that, and uh, uh, and I think that. I think I'm right that we also um, raise questions about uh, support for the Vietnam War. So we haven't totally ignored it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I know I've had people say to me, we were supporting communists and communism, you know, by mm. in both Cambodia, because when we were, when we went into Cambodia, it was not uh, a pro-West government. <laughs> it was they, they were had ten, well, they were supported by Vietnam there for a while. I, I think you know that was that was was one one issue. I I personally feel that CWS should should make clear where it stands. In, like in terms of Black Lives Matter. I'm, I don't know that it needs to beat people over the head or uh, uh, to be, you know, one of the, uh, uh, have radical programs, but I do think to make clear, I noticed that my daughter's organization, they, uh, it's a, the National Board of Medical Examiners, They've just come out with a statement about Asian Americans and hate, and and it's it's a well reasoned statement and it's um, but it makes a clear stand, and um, I, I I I really feel that that at this stage, CWS needs to to take a stand you know some people they want to get a lot of publicity and they take but i think measured statements that are based in in faith perspectives and so forth it, it seems to me that those are absolutely necessary now even if it even if it does cut into uh, you know the resources. I'm hopeful that this time we're going to kind of break through and you know take on some issues against racism and for mm -hmm. equality. And as someone was saying the other day, what it means is dealing with housing and jobs and mm -hmm. and areas mm -hmm. to to change. You know. And um, so I would, I would personally would support the CWS uh, 
giving some leadership in that in that that area. Mm-hmm. Okay. Th- thank you so much, Lonnie, for your time oh, thank uh, you. today. I really appreciate talking with you, Mari. Yeah, it was I so it was so your nice. Willingness to take time, you know, to talk yeah. about some of these issues because I've lived with them for a long time, and and unfortunately, I, I say it's twenty five years. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of rusty, but <laughs> well, it's 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 amazing the information that you still are able that's still there in 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 your you had, you, you said ninety three did you say ninety four wow, but I really can't tell you how much I appreciate your time because I know you're busy and uh, but to be able to talk so Great. I'll look forward to hearing from you. You will. You will. Okay, take care. Take good care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do you see you? Do you see me? Will you be the eyes so that we all can be? Thank you for listening to Walk, Talk, Listen. Please check us out on 100mile.org or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. And if you want to know more about Church World Service, please go to cwsglobal.org.